guys, happy Friday. For the Q&A today, I'm going to answer your questions about eczema on the scalp. Eczema is a common chronic skin condition in which you have rashes on the body that are red, itchy, sometimes dry, but also sometimes ooze and weep, this kind of clear uh, discharge that then crusts over and the rashes become kind of scabby. Eczema is incredibly itchy and with scratching the eczema rashes, they can become thick and discolored and dark. Uh, eczema can happen on any location in the body, but frequently happens on the extremities, like your arms, legs, hands, feet, and wrists. It also can affect your face, particularly around the eyelids where the skin is very thin. But many people with eczema don't realize that their scalp can be involved as well, and it's not uncommon to have scalp involvement with eczema. Many people who have itchy rashes of eczema in their scalp may just think, oh, this is really something that is caused by my shampoo or conditioner or hair dyes, and I kind of just have to live with it because I've got to wash my hair. Now, while those things can definitely play a role in the symptoms and rashes of eczema on the scalp, eczema on the scalp is more than just skincare products that you're using or hair care products. Eczema is a common name for a medical condition called atopic dermatitis. Atopic dermatitis is actually an inherited or genetic condition in which the skin is just not as hardy at staying hydrated and moisturized. And therefore, throughout that, throughout that individual's lifetime, they have to rely more heavily on the use of moisturizing products and they have to be very conscientious that their skincare practices are not overly drying out or irritating their skin because this can precipitate a flare of their skin condition, eczema. The reason for this is their skin just doesn't hold on to moisture and as the skin begins to lose water, it becomes dry and the skin barrier starts to suffer. People with eczema have a tendency towards an impaired skin barrier. They just don't form as tight of a seal to keep bacterial pathogens, allergens, and irritants out of the skin. And therefore, they are more susceptible to irritation and sensitivity from products, but also changes in the environmental moisture, like when the winter comes and the heaters come on and the humidity drops. So these are all major factors in eczema, including eczema on the scalp and its flares. So atopic dermatitis is a type of dermatitis, and you may be wondering how does this differ from other types of dermatitis? Dermatitis is a term, a catch-all term, that really just means inflammation in the skin. And there are many, many different types of dermatitis in the skin. Atopic dermatitis is just one of them. Another type of dermatitis is seborrheic dermatitis, or dandruff. And if you have eczema on your scalp, you may actually think that it's dandruff when in fact it's not. Dandruff or seborrheic dermatitis is a type of inflammatory skin condition of the scalp in which you have flaky, scaly, and often itchy patches throughout the scalp. But it's important to distinguish the two because products geared towards improving dandruff or seborrheic dermatitis actually can worsen eczema on the scalp quite a bit. They can be very drying and irritating depending on the active ingredients. And they actually can worsen your, your eczema on your scalp and make things worse. Not to mention picking or, or scratching at the eczema likewise makes it much, much worse. Whenever you scratch the skin, it um, responds by releasing more itching chemicals and more inflammatory mediators that prevent your skin from healing. It's really hard not to scratch though, and telling somebody with eczema, don't scratch, is like, I don't know, blowing in someone's face and telling them not to blink. It can be incredibly uncomfortable and itchy, and the compulsion to scratch is very, very strong. But unfortunately, it's that scratching behavior that really pushes the gas pedal on eczema, particularly in the scalp. Scratching the scalp can definitely worsen the eczema symptoms. So I already alluded to the fact that atopic dermatitis or eczema on your scalp can trick you into thinking that it is another type of dermatitis, seborrheic dermatitis or dandruff, but it's not. And so it's important to distinguish those two things. However, people with atopic dermatitis, including rashes on their scalp, 
are at an increased risk for developing another type of dermatitis called a contact dermatitis. And this is where your hair care and scalp care products come into play. Contact dermatitis is a type of rash due to something that comes in contact with the skin. People with atopic dermatitis are more likely to develop this because of their genetic tendency towards dry skin and their inherited defect in their skin barrier. They don't keep those contact irritants and contact allergens out of the skin as well. And therefore, they're more susceptible to developing contact dermatitis. In other words, it is not uncommon to have both conditions atopic dermatitis or eczema, which you were born with the tendency towards, and contact dermatitis, which has been caused by things in the environment that come into contact with the skin. So it's definitely common to have both. However, it's important to figure out if you have both or one or the other, because the treatment for contact dermatitis relies on avoiding whatever the ingredient or, or uh, product is that comes in contact with your skin and causes irritation or that you are allergic to, that you have become sensitized to and subsequently allergic to. And the way to tease all of these things out is to see your dermatologist to evaluate your scalp dermatitis and figure out exactly which scalp dermatitis you have. Do you in fact have eczema um, or is it something else? Maybe you already have a diagnosis of eczema or atopic dermatitis, so you're more suspicious that your scalp rash is your eczema. Still important to see your dermatologist to rule out that, a not, that you haven't developed a secondary contact dermatitis, which you are at risk for. And in order for your scalp eczema to improve, that's gonna be an important part of getting better and, and moving forward. What are some common things that you may be coming into contact with though that could be aggravating your um, eczema on your scalp, either through irritation or something that you have become sensitized to and allergic to? One of the most common ingredients or combination of ingredients that people become irritated by or sensitized to, whether they have eczema or atopic dermatitis or not, is fragrance. Fragrance is pervasive in skincare products. I always feel a strong compulsion to point that out to you guys and encourage everyone to make every effort to avoid using it in personal care products. And for people with eczema, it definitely can be a, be a real problem. And fragrance goes by a lot of names. It doesn't always say, state fragrance on the ingredient list. There are many different compounds which the immune system recognizes as fragrance and causes and, and, and you know does not like. So I'm gonna list those down below in the description box for you guys. I listed them in other videos, but I always think it's helpful information to have. So I'll put that down below. So don't be duped by the label free of synthetic fragrance. That doesn't mean that the product is fragrance free. And that's really just not even a relevant statement unless you prefer natural fragrance in terms of what you're seeking as a scent. But if you, if you have eczema, if you're seeking to avoid fragrance, it doesn't matter if it's natural or synthetic. The next most common set of ingredients or a common set of ingredients is going to be preservatives. Preservatives are really important ingredients in skincare and hair care products because they prevent the product from becoming contaminated with mold and with bacteria like Pseudomonas that could cause a lot of problems for you. But some preservatives are particularly more likely to be irritating or sensitizing. One of the most common preservatives to cause problems for people is one called methyl isothiazinolone or methyl chloroisothiazinolone. Alone. I will list this down below in the description box, but in terms of the scalp, it's very relevant because this ingredient is frequently present in a lot of shampoos and conditioners. Another ingredient that is commonly present in many, many conditioners is cocomethyl propyl betaine. This is another ingredient that people can be, be bothered by. And also a class of ingredients called alkyl glucosides that are frequently in a lot of shampoos and conditioners. They go by the names desyl glucoside, for example. Those two can cause problems. Outside of shampoos and conditioners, you've got your hair dyes to worry about. 
Hair dyes have something called paraphenylene diamine in them. Many hair dyes do, and they can de they are definitely a common common source of scalp eczemas in people, scalp dermatitis, contact dermatitis to paraphenylene diamine. Also, you have the harsh surfactant nature of a lot of shampoos and conditioners. They can just dry out your scalp and cause irritation. Most notably, sodium lauryl sulfate is very drying and can cause a lot of irritation. Again, in your personal and your shampoos and conditioners, be aware of not only fragrance, but essential oils, which are basically fragrance, but are added because they may have some potential beneficial properties, uh, but carry a huge risk. And one of the most common that I see in shampoos and conditioners is tea tree oil. Tea tree oil is added oftentimes uh, for kind of a natural antibacterial effect or for improving scaliness, and you may be tempted to use a shampoo or conditioner that has tea tree oil in it, when in fact that can be worsening your skin, your scalp dermatitis. And another common ingredient in shampoos and conditioners is menthol. Menthol is added to create a tingling sensation, make you, you know, kind of think that the product is doing something, but it's very, it can be very irritating to the scalp of people with eczema um, or atopic dermatitis. Likewise, another tingling agent is going to be peppermint. So you have to be conscientious of your shampoos, conditioners, and hair care products. And the best products for people going through this, who still need to shampoo their hair and condition their hair and maintain their hair, um, are, in my opinion, the Vanny Cream brand. They make a fragrance-free shampoo, a fragrance-free conditioner, a product uh, like a shampoo that is free of common allergens and irritants. Um, so that's always where I recommend people to, to start. In Canada, you guys have Clinoderm, um, but always ask your treating dermatologist or your healthcare provider what brands they would recommend because they are gonna be more familiar with what is available in your countries, in your areas, in your towns, what, what have you. Um, you know, I, I can't really always give you the most global uh, skincare product recommendations. Uh, you know, I, I mostly am familiar with what is available here in the States. But uh, ask your dermatologist or your healthcare provider, they can appropriately advise. But do know that hair care products are common allergens and irritants for the scalp. And then what are you doing to your hair? Are you somebody who blow dries or heat styles your hair? If you go to the, um, have your hair colored, are they putting you under that um, blow drying helmet thing? They can really dry out your scalp quite a bit and exacerbate scalp eczemas and the symptoms of itch and discomfort. Your bathing practices are really important, not only for scalp eczema, but for the rest of the skin of your body um, for eczema. If you take long, hot showers, this the hot water can strip your natural oils, deprive your skin of even more moisture, and can lead to loss of water from the skin and excessive dryness and flares of eczema. If you're in there too long, the exposure, the long exposure to water can also dry out the skin, dilute out some of your natural moisturizing factor and precipitate flares. So keep the shower short, no more than 10 minutes and use lukewarm water, which is not the most appealing thing I realize in the winter months, but it is, it is the best choice for your, for your eczema. Um, and then also, are you somebody who scrubs a lot in the scalp um, in, in an attempt to mechanically exfoliate your scalp? That actually could be aggravating an underlying eczema. So back off on the aggressive scrubbing. Um, and maybe you shampoo too frequently as well with a drying shampoo, that could be exacerbating your, your eczema. My, personally, I shampoo my hair daily, but that doesn't work for everybody. And for many people with eczema, that can actually worsen your scalp dermatitis. And so it makes more sense to try and space out your shampooing to every other night or maybe even a few nights a week. Some people just don't need to shampoo their hair as frequently um, and it helps their eczema to not do so. So those are kind of the tips and tricks about atopic dermatitis or eczema on the scalp. Uh, but number one tip is don't assume that your scalp dermatitis is one thing or that your scalp itch is due to one thing. It could be a couple of things. So always start by seeing a dermatologist. There is a differential diagnosis for itchy, scaly, uh, red inflamed patches on the scalp. And by differential diagnosis, I mean there is a list of things that this could be. 
Number one, we talked about atopic dermatitis. Also, number two, contact dermatitis, which we talked about. Number three, seborrheic dermatitis or dandruff, which we talked about. But also, um, tinea, what's called tinea capitis or ringworm on the scalp can cause scalp dermatitis and itching. And head lice. I have a video on head lice, by the way, but just be, head lice can happen in adults. It's not restricted to school children. Um, and it definitely can be incredibly itchy if you have head lice. Um, so, you know, there's a, there's a list of things that could be going on. Really important to get the right diagnosis so you can get on the path to right treatment and getting better. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. Check the description box. I will list some of my favorite fragrance-free shampoos, conditioners, hair care products for you all. But do you know there's no uh, foolproof list of products? Because if you are allergic to something, the key is avoiding that allergen or irritant. So I can't guarantee that the list down below will meet your needs, but it's a good starting point. And I encourage you to see your dermatologist to understand really what's going on. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.